Okay, good evening. Welcome to Ultimate Project 27. Today I'm going to uh, give you some notes on the Sockeye Furious game from Northwest Regionals 2011. Um, and the notes are referring to the Ulti Village ETP program film that you can find on Ulti Village's website. Um, so first the stats, uh, then I want to talk a little, just one thing about Sockeye because I've, I've done a bunch of films on Sockeye but, and not too many on Furious, so I want to focus on Furious as much as I can this uh, this film. Um, and then I'm going to show three things I think Furious did really well, and then three things where I think there was a little bit of room for improvement from Furious. But anyway, so first the stats. Sockeye throws 210 passes with 10 turns, that's about 95%. Uh, there's two points missing from the film, the first two points of the second half. Other than that, the whole film's here. And the, uh, Furious throws 99 passes with 9 turns, so, you know, roughly 9, 90%. Oh, actually a little better, uh, like 91, 92%. Um, uh, Furious has a really interesting style of play. Um, this is actually, a, a, you know, a reasonably good game from both teams, actually. There's a lot of good examples here. Furious is very, very quick, uh, moves the disc. Uh, very up tempo. If you like that style of play, I think you're going to be able to learn a lot from Furious in this game. Uh, in fact, I think they don't have a single possession in the whole game uh, with more than 10 passes. Uh, okay, so now the turns. After Furious turns, so after these nine turns, Saka has a long field seven times, converts four. A medium field one time, converts one. A short field once and converts once. So it's good Sakai converts the two gifts. After the 10 Sakai turns, Furious has a long field five times and converts three, a medium field twice converting once, and a short field three times converting uh, all three times. So Furious gives Sakai two gifts, resulting in two goals. Sakai gives Furious five gifts, resulting in four goals, and the difference in the game was two points. Um, and the one thing I want to talk about is these, these combined stats for the two uh, games that Sakai lost at Northwest Regionals 2011, which unfortunately eliminated them from Nationals due to the terrible uh, fact that there were only two bids from the Northwest this year. So let's take a look at those stats and then move on to Furious. Okay, so here are the combined conversion stats from the Sakai Revolver game, which was just the second half. Uh, and the Sakai Furious game, which misses the first two points of the second half. So, after Sakai's opponent's turns, they had the, the, a long field 11 times converting 6, so, you know, roughly half. A medium field twice converting once, and a short field once converting once. So, in those two, well, three halves, let's say, they got three gifts from their opponent converting 2. After Sakai turns, the opponent had a long field nine times converting five, so again, roughly half. So Sakai and their opponent in this regard are not that much different. But the difference is Sakai gave their opponent a medium field five times, of which resulted in three goals, and a short field five times, which resulted in five goals. So their opponents got ten gifts from Sakai, resulting in eight goals, and Sakai only got three gifts and, and two goals. That's really the difference in these two games, or, or a large part of the difference in these two games. As I mentioned in the Furious, um, sorry, in the Revolver Sakai game notes, Sakai has a lot of unforced turns. And those unforced turns, not all of these are unforced, some of these are nice Ds, but a lot of these Sakai turns end up being short fields for their opponents and result in really, really easy goals. And that, you know, when you're playing someone who's roughly equal to you in level, in skill level, you know, Revolver beats Sakai by a point, and Furious beat them by two points, if you give them ten short fields, it's just not going to... You're making your life a lot harder than it needs to be, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But anyway, um, I, wanna, I, wanna, I do want to focus on Revolver, or, sorry, I'm getting confused. I want to focus on Furious, and so... The first thing I want to do is talk about three plays in the Sakai Furious game where they do some really great things, and then we'll t I'll show you three plays where they need a little bit of improvement, and um, that'll be the tape, or that'll be this uh, ultimate project. So, on to three things that Furious did well. Okay, I'm going to do my best to draw out these plays, uh, and hopefully this makes sense. Furious's offense it has an incredible amount of motion. So all seven players on the field are constantly involved 
in the play. And so these plays uh, are a little bit more complicated than we've seen in other game films, but hopefully there's something to learn here, especially if you like really up-tempo play like Furious plays. So the first one I want to talk about is at 308. And you're going to see green's going to be the disc. Uh, the disc comes in, or at 308 the disc is sort of on the right-hand side of the screen and it swings over to the left-hand side. And you're going to see right away some, a Furious player coming in and then clearing out to the side here. And as that's happening, another Furious player is coming across the field like this. And then they both go off screen. And as that's happening, this player who swung the disc comes down the field here. The disc swings up to him, and then he throws a hawk to somebody who's sort of cutting from over here. They're, they come from off screen, so I don't know exactly where they start, but the, it's actually a really nice play. And what I want to point out is these two players who came into the disc initially, or one came in and one came across the field, stay short. Now they're off screen so it's a little bit hard to see, but I think this is a great example because if these players, which you don't see again until the, the, until the huck goes up, if these players had drifted deep, they, their defenders would have been able to shut off this huck. So they did a great job, and that's the lesson here. They came in, cleared out of the way quickly, left this space open in the middle of the field, and left the deep space open. So they just clustered here. Uh, Furious's O can sometimes look like it's, it's very chaotic, but you can see from examples like this that it's very controlled chaos. Their players know where to go, and they know how to create space for other players. This disc comes into the middle, they stay out of the way, nice hut goes up deep. This is really nice play by these two cutters who create the space for the throw into the middle and stay out of the space on the, on the throw deep. It's a really, really important lesson. So good job by Furious there. Okay, so the next, the next thing I'd like to point out, uh, which is a really great a uh, great example of nice play by Furious is, is the whole seventh point that goes from 658 to 739. It ends on, on, a, on, a, on a beautiful huck, actually, by Furious uh, to somebody running sort of from the middle deep and, and the throw goes up to the left-hand sideline. But similar to the last thing I pointed out, when you watch this point, watch the don't watch the handlers who are really mostly just swinging the disc back and forth. Watch the downfield cutters. And there's, a, there's two or three cuts before this huck, uh, cuts deep that aren't there. And you're going to see, in, in particular at, at 721, there's a guy over here. This is while well, the disc is over here. There's a guy over here who cuts deep. But in two or three steps, he realizes he's not getting the disc, and so he comes back in. So, and and you, there's a couple more examples of that during, during this point. So often, you'll see cut deep people cutting deep who aren't getting the disc who go way too deep. And then what happens is they're already deep and then this play can't go because there's another defender deep. So the furious downfield cutters here, while the handlers are swinging the disc back and forth, do a great job of recognizing immediately when they're open or when that huck's going up or not going up. And when the huck is not going up, they're back under right away. They, it's just two or three steps. Really nice play by the downfield cutters of Furious. Leaves the open, leaves the downfield wide open so that when the disc gets into someone's hand who has a look at a huck, it's there and goal. Really nice play by Furious. All right, third example. Okay, the last great example uh, that I want to focus on here is at 3159. It's after a, just a sick block. Uh, by one of the furious defenders on a, on a just a total routine swing play pass. So the guy, the defender made an incredible play. Uh, furious gets the disc maybe 10 yards away from the end zone and the disc swings across the field here to, to this cutter running away. So it actually kind of looks a little bit problematic but Furious's end zone out here is really really nice. You have you. It's a little hard to see, but you'll see somebody flash across the screen this way as the disc is going across the field. He's cutting over this way that pulls the sockeye defender, who I think is Alex Nord, out of the picture here. You'll also see the furious, one furious offensive player right here not move. 
Okay? He completely occupies his defender, and what that leaves is the entire space over here open and undefended. The furious, one other furious cutter at the front of the end zone comes straight across the field, and when this guy gets the disc over here, it just turns into a very easy goal. But this goal is made by these two players on Furious, who could have gone this way and would have left two Furious players there, or this guy could have gone too, leaving two Furious players there and, and stopping the goal. Instead, they both create space. This guy by just keeping a defender in the middle of the field, this guy by pulling the only defender there out of the picture, and it creates an easy goal. It's a very well coordinated end zone O by Furious. And I think, you know, they're going to watch some of these plays and be really, really happy about how they're playing. And as I said before, if you like really up-tempo play, I, I think, you know, some of the things I pointed out as well as a few other things in this tape are incredibly instructive about how all seven of Furious's offensive players work together on the field, cutting to space, and even more importantly, creating space for their teammates. Now, let's talk about a few times where it wasn't so nice for Furious. Okay, so the first, the first sort of poor play lesson from Furious comes at 4.23, the start of the fourth point. So, Furious gets the disc, uh, you know, right at the, up in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. And it, I mean, it almost looks like they just said on the line, we're going to hug to this guy, like no matter what. So he takes one step in and then busts deep and the throw goes up. But the defender's right there. The defender, uh, actually, this is number 30 from Saka. I don't, I don't know his name. He makes an incredible defensive play. But this cutter has no space. So no steps on the defender or anything. I mean, this is just purely, you know, throw it down the field and hope the offensive player gets there first. But, you know, in that case, I think the defense has a little bit of an advantage. Uh, and this guy, number 30 from Sakai, makes a great play. So this is just sort of curious. Like, I, I don't know what Furious is thinking here. This is, you know, there's no real advantage they have here. This is just sort of punting uh, or, you know, huck and hope or whatever you want to call it. So I thought this was a little uncharacteristic for a really strong team. This is just, you know, huck and hope. Okay, next, is, next sort of poor play example. All right, the next thing to point out it happens in 1733. This is... Uh, this is a, a Sakai turn that happens right at 1733, and at 1734, so, you know, basically right when the disc hits the ground, uh, Furious picks it up. There's nothing there. Uh, I haven't drawn the defenders, but I'm going to draw what happens to the disc here. There's nothing there. The guy kind of stands around for a little bit, and then the disc, which starts here, sorry, goes swing, 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 and then, you know, another sort of jump ball, and this, this time uh, it's Alex Nord who gets the block. And I, I just, you know, this, this to me is, is one of the areas where this really, really up-tempo play by Furious sort of works to their disadvantage. Here they have maybe half field to go. It's hard, it's sometimes a little hard to tell, but I, I thought this was about a medium field. And they just are off to the races. The disc is not on the, on the ground for basically about one second picked up with nothing there, and it results in a, in a turnover on a, you know, a jump ball a few passes later. But I think in situations, you know, if you're furious and you're, you're playing at, at, down in Sarasota, and you're playing other elite teams, and they give you these easier chances, you know, half field or short fields, here I think you're better off taking your time. Walk up to the disc, get a play set, like we talked about in that end zone play before, and, and and then go. Here you're picking the disc up, there's nothing going on, you end up swinging it and, and turning it. I, I just don't think this is that, that great. And then at 32.53 a very similar thing happens, although this time Furious recognizes the problem. So there's a, there's a Sakai turn at 32.53, the disc is picked up immediately, the guy stands around with no one to throw to for you know a couple of seconds and then calls a timeout. So it's, I'm, it's like, well, okay, well, <laughs> If there was nothing there, number one, why did you pick the disc up? And number two, if you were going to call a timeout, why didn't you just wait? You know, don't pick the disc up, look around, and see if there's anything there in the first place, and then call a timeout, and at least you get, you know, stall zero instead of stall four or five, whatever that would have been there. So, 
on these short chances, I think, I think Furious needs to at least consider taking their time and, you know, hopefully that'll improve their chances and, and they'll get better looks than, than just sort of jump balls. Okay, last one.